Okay, we're going to be going over ARRC 1010A, which is tools, basically tools today. Uh, we're going to cover, as you see, various types of tools that we use in this field. By no means is this all that you'll need, and by no means is it uh, enough to even get started. But we're going to try to hit the highlights of what you'll see out there, and the first thing that we're going to hit is some electrical tools. About 75%, and that's always a question on whether it's 75, 70, 80. You hear different people say different things about how much of the problems in the HVACR field deal with electricity, but it's somewhere in the 70-ish range, I, would, I feel for sure, that you're, you're going to see problems, electrical problems, that occur, and many times those can be prevented if the, if the installation is correct. I want to show you a little something about hooking up wires that's very important. Using the proper tool to do the proper job, I cannot emphasize that enough. When it comes to cutting the wire and stripping it, you need to use the proper stripper. If not, you can create some problems in the near future. I always like to compare copper to glass, and I don't know if any of you have ever had any uh, experience at cutting glass, but glass, you don't cut it through like you would with a saw or, 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 or a board or something like that. All you do is you just scratch it and then it will break where it's scratched at. Well, copper's a lot like that. Wherever it gets scratched at is where it's probably going to break at. When it comes to electrical terminals and, and connections, if they're not tight and, and, and uh, secure, that's where you're going to have the problem at. It's going to overheat, it's going to uh, possibly even burn the wire or the terminal itself. Okay, what I want to do is I want to show you some of the terminals that we do use, some of the connectors, and this is a crimp type connector. Now, you notice that I cut the wire with a cutter and stripped it with a uh, stripper, this particular tool right here. I did not use a box cutter, a razor, a pocket knife. The reason being, when you do, you're going to... Uh, touch that wire, I don't care how good you are, you're going to touch that wire and you're going to play, make a place for it to break. A little bit of vibration is going to break. Another thing is, is you want to use the proper tool to crimp that. Now, I've seen folks use a pair of pliers more than one time, and I'm going to try to demonstrate what happens when you do that. brought a pair of pliers out here just for that occasion. It'll probably work good today instead of bad, but I'm hoping that you'll see what I'm getting at. If I take a pair of pliers instead of the proper tool and I crimp it, it's going to look like I've done a good job. Mashed it flat, only one problem. I don't know if you can see this or not, but that's actually loose in there. Okay? Whereas this one, it's not going to come loose. Loose connections cause problems. That's all it is to it. I have seen loose connections cause thousands of dollars of damage. There's no other way to put it. When you're hooking up a wire on a terminal, if we take a screw terminal, for example, let's say this is the uh, screw head, you want your wire to go in it so that as the screw tightens, it tightens the wire into it. Don't put it on in the opposite direction. In other words, do not put it like so. Because when you tighten this, it will actually loosen the wire and push it out of it. Always put it in the direction as it tightens down it will actually pull the wire into it. It is best if you have these type terminals 
on stranded wire. Okay? That's not always possible, but make sure that the connectors are made for the type of wire that you're using, including the size and the uh, application. They come in different configurations. Some are like so. The others are more in the spade type connector also. I'm going to pass these around. You can take a look. Don't, I, that's uh, about a 150 uh, piece pickup in case you drop it. I do that quite often from time to time. So <laughs> That's the way that you can always reassort them and those kind of things. You know, when you own a job, you're usually not, especially a construction job, you're usually not going to be the only one on that job. There's going to be framers, there's going to be uh, tile people, uh, sheetrock people, uh, especially commercial, you'll see people that's hanging ceiling, things such as that. I always love this. Can I borrow a pair of cutters? And you got a pair of cutters in your hand, right? I don't know if you've gone out and bought any of these yet, but a pair of pliers like this or a pair of side cutters like this, like so, you're looking at somewhere in the 20 ish dollar range. Okay, give or take, sometimes more, sometimes less. These things are made to cut copper and aluminum. They're not made to cut steel. You hand one of these things to a fellow that's putting in ceilings, he doesn't know any different. He hits one of those steel wires up there, instead of a pair of side cutters, you now have a stripper. Because you're not going to cut the wire. It's going to do the damage inside that cutter itself. It's run. It does happen. Well, how do you fix that? Well, you really don't. <coughs> so, Take care of your tools, it's very important because, uh, you know, the fellow that you loan them to, he may not understand how to use them. Now, I, I've seen that more than once, and it sounds like you're being hard by not loaning your tools out, but if they don't know how to use them, they don't need to have them in their hands. Okay, let's move on to a, little, uh, a few other things. The HVACR field has a lot of special tools that we use from time to time, one in particular is what we call a refrigeration wrench. Okay, the refrigeration wrench, this one is actually one that can be reversed by the click of an action here. And this also has various sizes. You can pass that around. And I want to grab a service valve and show you what that tool is for. Ricky, uh, give me just one moment. Okay. that I've got going around is made to fit the stem. If someone uses a pair of pliers on this stem, it's going to round it out. Another thing that happens, if someone uses an adjustable wrench, if it's not tight, fits good, it's going to round it out also. But worse than that, I'm going to run this stem out. If someone grabs the stem near the bottom with a pair of pliers like so and they grab it, these teeth in here will cause places on that stem that as soon as this stem is, is carried in past the seal, it's going to run the seal and you've got what you don't want, a refrigeration leak. Okay. These, this is a service valve. We're going to cover uh, service valves in another part, but they have a cap that goes over them. The cap should always be put back. It keeps rust from forming on that stem also. I want to cover that while we're in here about that. The, the uh, service wrench that I passed around is the proper tool for using on that. Okay. Copper is a material that you're going to have to become familiar with. We use a lot of it in the HVAR, HVACR field. And this is a flaring block and the oak. We'll have a lesson on how to do flares in the near future, but one thing's for sure, this is one tool that can either be your friend or your enemy. 
learning how to use it properly it is very important. I know very few systems that don't have some sort of mechanical connectors, meaning flares or such. I want to pass that around, please. Sir. You know, tubing cutters are another tool that you'll see a lot of, and I've got a brand new one right here. This particular tubing cutter has got a piece on it made after you cut the pipe, you can actually deburr the pipe. It also has a file made on the end of this deburr that you can take off any rough edges. But more importantly, if the cutting wheel has any imperfections in it, you're going to have a problem flaring the copper after you cut it. You want to make sure that this wheel is in very good shape. Okay, We're going to go over that again in another lesson when we, uh, in just a couple of weeks. But these are, are uh, tools that are pretty much unique to the HVAC industry. Now I say that because, and let me back up, you see plumbers use these too. But if you loan this tool out to someone, we're going to pick on electricians, who decides to cut a conduit with this tool, you might as well let him keep it. Okay? Pass that around. This is one that I don't think there's any doubt this is special in this field. Y'all know what these are? Refrigeration gauges. Now, gee, that was bad. These gauges have a place to park the hoses. Okay? 